Assalamu alaikum dear viewers and welcome to our Learn Arabic show. Um, so in our previous session um, we had discussed about Inna and her sisters and of course all the rulings and of course we also looked at examples. We looked at the fact that Inna, the ism Inna always is accusative and uh, the predicate of Inna and her sisters is always in the nominative. Now before we move to the other um, rules of Inna and her sister, um, we will be looking, we will have this um, exercise. Um, I will explain you what is to be done. Okay, so this exercise is based on Kana and her sisters. I said I'll try giving more of exercises. So the first question, okay, all look at the first question we have is Kana al baytu nawifan, right? So what you have to do is translate the sentence and then you identify the Kana and her um, sister and of course also have some sort of a sentence analysis determining what is the ism of what is the subject of the sentence what is the khabar of the sentence so the first thing you will do so the first thing you do is translate the second thing you will do is identify kana plus the sisters the third thing that you will do is a sentence analysis. What I mean by sentence analysis meaning identify the ism of the sentence plus the khabar. And the fourth thing you will do is you will rewrite this sentence without Kana and her sister. So you rewrite the sentence excluding Kana and her sisters and translate. So rewrite sentence without Kana plus sisters and translate. So we will do the first example together. So we, we have a total of um, four questions, four parts per each question. So the first question we have, كان البيت نظيفا, meaning the house was clean. Okay, so that is my translation. I will just do one example with you. So I have done my part one, I have translated it. My second part is to identify Kana and the sister and um, my um, word here will be Kana of course and Kana means was. So my second part of the question is also done. My third part of the question is sentence analysis meaning I'll have to identify the ism and the khabar of the sentence. You all know ism is the subject khabar is the predicate. So the subject of the sentence that we are talking about here is al -baytu. So that is my um, ism. So you can see it, the, my ism, that is my subject, is al -baytu. My khabar is what? Nadifan. Okay. So I have also finished my sentence analysis. Therefore, identifying my ism and my khabar. And you also have to tell me, you have to justify with a reason, why is this an ism and why is this a khabar? So identify with a reason, okay? So the reason that I give, why do I say that the house is the subject of the sentence? It is because when I insert kana, okay, the ism will not change. Remember in the previous uh, classes I told you that when you insert kana, the only thing that will change is the khabar. The khabar will change from the nominative tanween to accusative tanween with an addition of an alif. However, the ism that is the subject of the sentence will not change. So that is the reason I use to justify the fact that baytu is the ism remains the same in the nominative and navifan is my khabar with um, this of course accusative tanween and this 
Therefore, that's the reason I used to justify it. So my sentence analysis with reasoning is over. Then my last part here, um, rewrite the sentence without kana and translate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove kana, okay? So because it says rewrite the sentence without kana and her sisters. So once I have removed the kana from the sentence, this I will have to change it without, how will it appear without a kana? So this will be albaytu remains the same, but I cannot say albaytu navifan, I will say albaytu navifun. So I have re I have rewrote I rewrote the sentence without using kana. I have removed kana. This one has changed from accusative with an alif. Of course, it has changed to a nominative sign. Why? Because I have removed kana. So my sentence will be albaytu nadifun, meaning the house is clean. So this was changes to is because I have removed kana, right? So the house is clean. So I've also re I rewrote the sentence without kana and her sister and I have translated. So that was just one example. You will do the same with all the other sentences for each sentence, translate the sentence as it is, then um, identify kana and her sisters, that is the second step. Then the third step, do a sentence analysis, identify the ism of the sentence and the khabar with reasoning. Why have you chosen this word as the ism and why not the other word? So reason it out. The last um, thing you have to do, rewrite the whole sentence without using kana and her sister with reasoning and of course you will translate. So I'll just read out the rest of the questions for you. We did one example together. Um, it says, Sara Rajulu Ghaniyan. And of course, if you don't know the meaning of the words, try um, looking it up from the dictionary. I don't want to spoon feed you. Okay, so Asbaha Zaydun Maridan. Then, next question we have is Asbaha Zaydun Ghaniyan. Then we have Amsal Amilu Mutriban. And finally, we have Adhal Ghamamu Kathif. And I've given you the meaning. Ghamam, of course, it is a type of, is it broken plural? Yes, it's a type of Jamar al mukassar And of course, it falls under the category of Fa'alun, which is Ghamamu, which is clouds, and Kafifan means dense, right? So you will um, do this exercise that I have left for you. I've given you the instructions. We have done one example together. I hope you will be able to do these um, questions. Right, so now we'll be proceeding with Inna and her sisters. We still have other rules to um, complete. So I'm going to just rub this off. Right, so the first rule we had discussed in our previous session was the difference between Inna and Anna. We said Anna is mostly used in the middle of the sentence. Inna is used at the beginning of the sentence. That was the first difference. The second difference was that in some cases we find that inna could come in the middle of the sentence when it is preceded by a word having root letters such as we saw yaqulu innaha baqaratun safra'u okay so in some cases inna can appear at the middle of the sentence when it is preceded by a word having root letters yaqulu such as qaf waw and lam so that was the first rule the second rule we will look at today um, we have is about the khabar. Okay, now um, of course khabar, the, the predicate. Of course, all these days we have been looking at the predicate, but we have only looked at it as just one word. For example, I can say, Inna Allaha ghafuran. Okay, so um, we have just looked at the khabar as just one word, but the khabar can also be a complete sentence, right? So my example, 
So the khabar can be a complete sentence. So the example we have here is inna. Inna we have Zaydan. Inna Zaydan. Ummuhu. Salihatun. Okay, so we have a complete sentence here. Inna Zaydan Ummuhu Salihatun, right? Now here what I have to do is to identify the ism and the khabar of the whole sentence, right? So my ism of this sentence, of course, will be Zaydun. So my ism, ism what? Is it just any ism? It is ism kana. So my ism kana of the sentence is Zaydun, Zaydun. So that is my ism kana. But what about my khabar? Now here the khabar will be this whole sentence. Ummuhu salihatun. That is my whole khabar of the <coughs> of the whole sentence. So ummuhu salihatun will be my khabar inna, right? Because all these days we have been looking at khabar as one word itself, but it can be a complete sentence. So the translation will be indeed. Zaid's mother is pious. So um, my khabar, khabar, sorry, this is inna, some inna, khabar inna, so my khabar inna will be ummuhu salihatun, right? So um, that is my sentence. Let's look at another example. So the second example that we have is Inna Zaydan. Inna Zaydan akalat ta'am. Okay, inna Zaydan akalat ta'am. Indeed, Zaydan ate the food, right? So, of course, what will be my huruful mushabbaha bil fi'l? We forgot to identify the huruful mushabbaha bil fi'l in the first example, so do that. Okay, so here, my huruful mushabbaha bil fi'l will be inna. So, this is my, my huruful. Harful Mushabbaha Tibil Right? So my Harful Mushabbaha Tibil Fi'il Right? So that is my Inna Then of course what is my Ism of the sentence? My Ism Inna is Zaydan Then what is my Khabar Inna of the sentence? My Khabar Inna is Akalat Tu'am This whole thing is the khabar. Of course, this is the fi'l and um, this is the object. So this whole sentence will be my khabar inna of the whole sentence, right? So we have looked at how khabar can not only just be limited to being just one word, you can have a whole sentence that is the khabar itself. So now we will look at um, the third rule. So the first rule we discussed about was difference between inna and anna. The second rule we have discussed about is that khabar can actually be a whole sentence. Now our third rule is if there is a Harfujar Jar 
before before the khabar then khabar just write it the way it is i'll explain you and uh, there is some right so if there is a helpful jar before the khabar then the khabar will be the first in the sentence followed by the ism now all the sentence that sentences that we have looked at we have seen that the ism is first followed by the khabar right but in this case because the khabar is preceded by a harfu jar you know what harfu jar is the preposition then the khabar will come first followed by the ism usually we have seen the ism comes first then followed by the khabar okay for example we have looked at um in zaidan akalat ta'am zaid was the ism it came first Akala ta'am was the khabar came second. But in this case, the khabar will come first, followed by the ism, which will come second. Why? Because the khabar has been preceded by the harfu jar, right? So the example which we will have here is in in Inna ilayna iyabahum. Okay, so our sentence here is Inna ilayna iyabahum, meaning indeed to us is their return, right? So the sentence indeed to us is their return <clears throat> now if you look at the english part of the sentence what do you think is the subject whom are we talking about in this sentence we are talking about them okay we are talking about their return that is the subject of our sentence what are we talking about we are talking about their return so logically if you look at it logically the ism the subject the muptada of our sentence is their return right and in arabic their return meaning iyabahum so this is actually our ism ism inna but what are they talking about their return what about their return to us is their return meaning the khabar will be to us right so this will be um, my khabar inna okay so they're saying that to us is their return so my khabar is il aina and of course um the ism here is iyabahum so you notice that this Khabar comes first, the ism comes second. Why? It is because this khabar has been preceded by a harfu jar. Remember I told you this is um, the ruling of jar and mujawara. You know that ruling jar and mujawara which brings them close and joins them up together. So this ilayna, if I break it down, it becomes ila, then ya, then na meaning this is two and this is us right now i can't just say ilana that will not that is grammatically wrong ilaina okay if i break it down it's ila ya and na right so in order to combine them together i need a letter that combines them together and according to the ruling of half, I'm sorry, um, half ujjar, ja and mujawara, this ya is the one that will bring them 
close and that will join them up together. So this ila, ya, na becomes ilayna, right? So here the khabar of my sentence of course is na, meaning to us, na. But this na here has been preceded by a harfu of course, here in Elena, the harfu jar is a bit hidden in the sentence, but if you break it down, you notice that there is a harfu jar here. So this is Elena. Now, because of the fact that na is being preceded by a harfu jar, the khabar will come first, followed by the ism. In usual, most cases that we have looked at, the ism comes first, followed by the khabar. But here, the khabar comes first, followed by the ism, um, which will come second in our sentence. So this was the ruling of um, Jar and Mujawara. Um, inshallah, we will continue with our other topics. We still have other topics to cover. Alhamdulillah, we have finished now with Inna wa akhawatuha. We have also finished with Kana wa akhawatuha. We have looked at all the rulings. We have looked at all the examples possible. And of course, I will repeat myself again. Do not limit yourself to what I teach you. Myself, try and look up more exercises on your own. Thanks for listening and have a nice day.